there's a lot of mock draft boards that have the Raiders uh, selecting Cam Ward, quarterback, and uh, Ollie Gordon as running back in the second round. And I and I discussed, you know, Ollie Gordon last year was the best running back in the in college football. This year, it is obviously Ashton Genty. We'll see if he can maintain uh, his his stats, uh, but he is on on course to break two thousand yards. Uh, doesn't look like he's he may not reach a Barry Sanders record of over twenty six hundred yards, but it looks like he'll at least break that two thousand yards. So should the Raiders uh, try and draft somebody like that? Uh, not sure. Uh, Richard says, uh, a five ten quarterback typically aren't very good except Kyler Murray. Kyler Murray's, I would argue is not even that good. I would, I would, uh, I would argue that Kyler Murray is mid tier that he is, um, he has flashes because he's so hard to bring down and capture. He's so hard to sack, but, uh, he, st- he does get sacked a lot though. Even then, so he can he can extend things, uh, and this is what Bryce Young brings. He brings that uh, ability to extend plays. So we'll we'll see if if something like this happens. But I I just kind of wanted to get your guys' understanding of it. Drop your comments down below. How do you feel if the Raiders and this is the proposal? Um, if the Raiders were to give up a fourth round draft pick for a number one overall draft pick just last year in Bryce Young. Now I know there's a, a lot of feelings about um you know his his first year in a quarter in the NFL has not been good, despite them having a uh, one of the most expensive offensive lines over there in Carolina, but they don't have a whole lot else. Um but his his outing so far has not been impressive. Last year, Aiden O'Connell had better numbers. Bryce Young had more yards, but he also had more games. Um, and Aiden O'Connell had better numbers. Let me let me read off some stats to you. So as a rookie, Aiden O'Connell played in eleven games. Bryce Young played in sixteen. Aiden O'Connell with only 11 games, had 12 touchdowns and 7 interceptions, whereas Bryce Young had 11 touchdowns, so less than AOC by 1, and 10 interceptions, so more than AOC by 3. Now, Aiden O'Connell put up 2,218 yards, whereas Bryce Young put up 2,877 yards. And again, Bryce Young basically played almost an entire season last year. So, rookie-to-rookie scale... You could say you could certainly argue that Aiden O'Connell was a much better quarterback. Uh, we're at 22 likes, got over 107 people in here. Please help the live stream out right now and smash that like button if you haven't done it already. And uh, get your comments down below. We're going to be going through these comments this morning as we are warming up into this live stream uh, pre Cincinnati game. We're going to be talking a lot about a lot of different things. We're not just going to be talking about Bryce Young, but we're going to talk about a lot of different things that the Raiders need to do moving forward. Um, But here, let me let me propose this question to the chat room. If Ben Johnson, the offensive coordinator of the Detroit Lions, was the head coach of the Raiders and running the offense and developing the quarterback, could Bryce Young turn into a superstar? with that type of coaching staff that they have over there in Detroit right now? Do you think he would have a drastically different career path? Or do you think Bryce Young would still be a bust? And would a a fourth-round draft pick for a kid just a year and a half ago was drafted number one overall out of Alabama? And remember, in Alabama, he was an absolute stud. But you also have to remember in Alabama, I mean, their offensive line just dominates people. So they kind of make pretty much any quarterback look like a stud over there. And this is my problem with Jalen Milrow. I, I'm not convinced about Jalen. In fact, I'm always a little bit leery about just about any quarterback that comes out of Alabama. Just because they've been so dominant over people over the years. Um, I'd rather draft a quarterback like like Jaden Daniels out of LSU who doesn't have all the hype but puts up all the numbers. 
I'd rather draft a quarterback like Cam Ward out of Miami who doesn't have all the hype that puts up all the numbers. Shador Sanders out of Colorado with a off- uh, terrible offensive line. Without, well, I won't say without all the hype because he actually does get a lot of hype because of his dad. But I would rather draft Shador Sanders than somebody out of Alabama. Just because it's, you know, Alabama is simply so dominant over everybody that, yes, their quarterbacks look amazing, but then when they get to the NFL, not so much. Right? Uh, I know Tua came from Alabama, and he's doing pretty good. Um, But, you know, long-term, if you look at a lot of the quarterbacks that came out of Alabama, they're not even in the NFL now. Now, with this being proposed, if the Raiders were to trade a fourth-round draft pick for Bryce Young, just a, just, I mean, he's on a rookie-scale contract, and we certainly have the cap space. We know Gardner Minshew's not going to be here next year. In fact, I would argue this. I would rather have Bryce Young in there than Gardner Minshew. So we know Gardner Minshew's gone, right? We're going to eat that $3 million dead cap for him. We're going to cut him, and he'll be gone. He's not going to be on the team next year. And so imagine this. You know, Aiden O'Connell might not even be on the team next year. He may get put down to the practice squad. But imagine this. You have a three-way quarterback competition. You have Desmond Ritter, who had a lot of high upside coming out of Cincinnati. You have Bryce Young, the former number one overall draft pick coming out of Alabama. And then the Raiders draft Cam Ward or Shador, one of the two. Now, with that being said, in order for the Raiders to draft a quarterback this year, uh, a stud like Cam Ward or Shador, the Raiders have to pretty much lose out the rest of the season because as it stands right now, the Raiders are pick number six overall. That's not high enough. We need to be in the top two to guarantee that we're going to get a quarterback of our choosing because you don't want to draft a quarterback in the first round other than Cam Ward or Shador Sanders. There is not a quarterback that's coming out in this draft that is worthy of a first-round draft pick other than those two. Straight up. Jalen Milrow, uh, Beck, any of these guys, they are not first-round quarterbacks. I said the same thing about Drake May last year. Look at him. So the Raiders need to lose games, unfortunately. I, I, don't, I hate the idea, and I've never wanted the Raiders to ever tank. But I think this season we need to, we need to right the ship, and the only way to right the ship is you've got to have a captain, and the quarterback is the captain out there on the field, and we don't have one. M85 in the house. What is going on? Good morning to everybody that is in the chats. Get your comments in. I'll go through as many as I can. Maybe Peyton out in Denver, having worked with Breeze, even though they only won one. Cam Ward and Sanders going one and two have to lose the rest of the games to even think about QB, other teams tanking. Cam Ward and and Shador could go one and two depending on who's got number one and two, right? So if we if we look at it, the the people that or the teams that need a quarterback right now, especially if Carolina trades off Bryce Young, they're going to draft. You know they'll they'll probably have the number one pick again, um, and they'll draft uh, either Shador or Cam Ward. Then Tennessee, obviously going to draft a quarterback. And then you have New England, who's pick number three right now. They're not going to draft a quarterback. They just drafted Drake May last year. They're going to surround him. Uh, Jacksonville has Trevor Lawrence, so they're not going to draft a quarterback. But New Orleans could absolutely. So you're looking at Carolina, Tennessee, and New Orleans are all ahead of us. And all of those, all of those teams could potentially draft a quarterback. And even though right now it has... Cam Ward falling to the Raiders at pick number six, I highly doubt it. Unless in New Orleans, if Derek Carr, you know, he's coming off of that injury, if they get everything back in shape over there and he starts winning games and they make a playoff run, then maybe they don't draft the quarterback. 
But that would still put Carolina and Tennessee ahead of us. That means Shador and Cam are gone. And uh, at this point, I don't see Carolina winning another game. Tennessee could, but we, we need them to win a couple of games for us to move up to that number two. And here's the issue, is if Carolina and Tennessee win, or, or don't win, if they're, if they're picks number one and two and they need a quarterback, they're not going to give up a quarterback. Big Red Ryan up in the house, April's man up in the house, M85, Michael F., uh, Handsome, R7, uh, Richard, El Cicero, all my guys up in here. Good to see all you guys. Billy Davis, don't want to miss out on anybody. Uh, Roderick, Bacteria, Mr. CT, Johnny, uh, Senior State, uh, Steve, WJ, maybe, uh, says Draft Shador, Sanders. And this is this is my this my issue is if the Raiders were to do this and and I will say this, um, according according to sources within the the Raiders organization, and uh, I and, and again I, I got question about that in in a comment today it was a silly comment. My source says that you have no sources you're just a clickbait dude. Okay, sure. Go back and look at my videos of me interviewing players. I guess I have no sources. I, I don't know how they how they came on my channel and, and I did an interview with them if I have no sources. Go look, go back and look at my trip to Vegas where we sat in the friends and family section, VIP section, tickets you cannot buy. It is by invite of the Raiders only. Um, the, it's a very secured area. And how, how was I there sitting next to Jack Jones' family? I don't know. I guess I have no sources. But anyway, according to sources, I'm just going to say now, according to sources close to the situation, here's the latest information we have from inside the building. And that is that um, Jacoby Myers, been a lot of talk about him being on the trade block and the Raiders may be moving off of him. They would get a fourth round draft pick for him. I don't like that trade. Um and as far as Jacoby knows, um, he's not going anywhere. However, uh, Cody Whitehair and John Jenkins are on the trade block. And, you know, obviously if, if, a, if a big enough offer was offered to Jacoby, Tom Telesco would entertain it. But for a fourth-round draft pick, it's just not enough for a guy of his caliber. So... There is some trades that are expected to happen within the building. This is this is the feeling within the building of the Raiders. I'm not talking about just people out there proposing trades, but there is some trades that will happen after tomorrow's game. And whether that it's announced tomorrow or it is announced on Sunday, obviously if I learn about it before the national media, I will absolutely let all of you know it. So there is some trades that are going to happen. My assumption is is that they're going to move off of Cody Whitehair, probably get a sixth or a seventh round draft pick for him, uh, and John Jenkins. These are two rental players for a team that just needs some depth, some uh, rotational players. Uh, don't expect Jacoby Myers to be going anywhere, but uh, it, obviously anything could happen in the NFL. There is a sense that there is a big trade that will happen, though. And it will happen after Sunday's game. And you can you compare that to all of the talk of Carolina moving off of Bryce Young. They've given up on Bryce Young. With that being said, the big trade that the Raiders could make could be for Bryce Young. Again, there's a lot of... There's a lot of insiders out there in the media space who are saying that the Raiders could trade and that Carolina would be up for trading Bryce Young for a fourth-round draft pick. So, here's another, another situation. Let's talk about Alexander Madison. Listen, if the Raiders aren't if the Raiders aren't going to do anything this season, if we lose against the Cincinnati Bengals, which I expect we will, um, do we keep Alexander Madison? Because we have a lot of running backs, actually. 
both on the active roster and the and the practice squad that we can pull up. Do you keep Alexander Madison or do you trade him the lone bright spot in the running game? Do you trade Alexander Madison for a draft pick? Let's say we traded Alexander Madison for a fourth round draft pick. And you then use that fourth round draft pick to trade for Bryce Young. You cut Gardner Minshew. Just, just cut him. Like completely off the team. And you you make it a competition between Desmond Ritter and Bryce Young. Honestly, I think Desmond Ritter has the higher upside. I think Bryce Young, in my own opinion, was overblown coming out of Alabama. One, his lack of size. Um, you know, and everybody was saying he's Kyler Murray 2.0. I get it. And he is a shifty dude. He's hard to bring down, but because he doesn't have good vision down the field, he does take a lot of sacks. So he'll get out of one sack, but he'll run himself into another. And that's kind of the issue with him. Whereas with Desmond Ritter, when he, when he takes off, he just takes off. And then if the Raiders do end up in, say, second place, to Carolina. Now, remember, if Carolina wins a single game, we move ahead of them in the draft order because they beat us. So they have the tiebreaker by beating us this year. So we would move ahead of them. 